When I came to Canada, I joined a company in the belt business as controller. The owner of the company was Peter Sheldon, uh, Mary's husband. Over the five years that I worked for Peter, uh, we became very good friends. Peter hired Jeff back in the Sheldon belt days, and uh, he always had this vision that him and Peter developed and started Powerhouse. We had a common love of, of fishing. It wasn't long before I was uh, flying in with Peter to northern Canada going fishing. The one fishing trip we went on, there were four of us on the trip. I was on dinner duty that night and uh, so I stayed to cook dinner. It was a blustery sort of a day and... I was out fishing on one lake and Jeff was cooking dinner. Peter and Neil uh, was going to fish in the lake where the lodge was. I was standing at the, at the window looking out thinking that there's time that the guys should be coming back. I saw a, a, uh, the aluminum boat go by upside down and blowing past in the wind. And I immediately realized that a, there'd been an accident. So I got into the canoe and went to try and find uh, the boys and... Jeff found me on the shoreline um, on a set pickup time. And then we found their boat. By this time the boat had drifted down to where he was and uh, he'd seen it as well and he was frantically going up and down the shore and I, I picked him up and we set off together. We found, uh, we found uh, uh, Peter and, and Neil and... Ironically, they washed up on the island we were staying at. Sadly, Peter was in the water. Um, the ice had just gone off the water. Neil was in, had managed to get himself ashore and was in, in, in real trouble, so... Neil, Neil managed to survive the trip, but sadly Peter had passed away. We went back and in the end Peter succumbed to the hypothermia. Horrible, horrible time. I mean, 20 odd years ago now, I guess, and uh, he was a hell of a guy and we had a lot of fun and loved fishing and enjoying life. Yeah, it's, it's, it was a rough period. One of the really hard parts of that, that was that in, in coming back and telling Mary that Peter, was, Peter had, had passed away that trip. Um, that was the, a tough thing to do. Then I think you're just in a, in a daze until the funeral's over. It's the day after the funeral, Jeff phoned me and told me we were partners. And they had only been in business 15 months. Come on, you know, Mary wasn't working with Peter and I at that point, but you know, um, you're gonna have to start working now, so. She was, you know, absolutely devastated and but through it, she was strong. I think by the end of that week, in fact, I think before the end of that week, she was on the computers already and doing her work and never batted an eye from that. First priorities was to, in fact, keep the, uh, the, the, the kids fed and the mortgages paid, so to speak. So. My husband and Jeff had gone to a bar weeks before the fishing trip, and they had decided that if anything happened, that I would become Jeff's partner. If anything happened to Jeff, Peter would buy Jeff's wife out. So it just started and Peter died in May and by June we were on our way to Montreal to meet the company we were working for at that point in time, Aero Manufacturing. But we realized very quickly that the business in Montreal was really Peter's baby. It was the belt business that he had been in for years and um, we had to do something else. In that whole period, a sort of year went by where we were, we were in that whole process of, of that transition. Uh, wondering what we were going to do and uh, we, we decided that we would start our fuel force and envisaged in our mind pretty quickly that the fuel force as it exists today, we had this vision in our mind. We went looking for accounts in, in, in fuel force and... Uh, we didn't have a service force. We really had Jeff and I. Mary um, would say, well, how, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to talk to people? And Jeff said, just pretend we're still at Sheldon's and we still have the field force right across Canada. So we walked into the meeting and the first comment out of their mouths is we've heard wonderful things about you. Wonderful things about your people. And we went, okay, and it was a great beginning to the meeting. We did that and we landed a, 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 an account in southwestern Ontario to merchandise socks. At that time, Jeff was, you know, a, a friend. So, yeah, whatever I could do to help out Jeff and Mary was gonna happen. We got the account the day we were there. We walked back to the car, and Jeff had a phone call. I just happened to be uh, in New York, and we were trying to secure Tommy Hilfiger dress shirts. 
We wanted to be the first ones to bring them into Canada. I hadn't heard of Tommy Hilfiger dress shirts and nor had Canada, but we were assured that it was going to be a big label and sure enough it is a big label and still is a big label. Without even talking to Jeff, we just proposed to the Hilfiger people that they should talk to Jeff. He's got all the know-how, he's got all the uh, technology. They had a new line and uh, they needed, the, the company needed a warehouse in, in Toronto and uh, they didn't know anybody. and. Uh, would we be interested in warehousing product? And I went, yeah, we can do that. So we have a merchandising account with no merchandisers, and we have a warehouse account with no warehouse. So, and there the fun, fun began. Mary called her girlfriend up in, in London, Ontario, and says, come on, Brenda, you're working, and, uh, and that was that. They showed me where my little workstation was going to be. It was a chair, and I, I mean, I just wanted to work with Mary. I mean, she's just such a great person to work with. We knew how each other worked. Um, I knew that she would be putting in 110 to make it go, and I wanted to too. Debbie and I just started traveling and hiring people as we went. There was no doubt that we would be able to execute this. It wasn't even, we weren't biting off more than we could chew or anything like that. We just, we knew how to execute it once we got it started. But. You know, we couldn't spend the money on putting people in place until we had something for them to do. We reacted and rented some, some space that had been used for one of the political parties at the time and it had a really grotty basement. I would bring a van, my van, with a group of kids in my neighborhood, like my son's kids, so I'd bring my two kids and their friends and they were our, um, they were our employees like we have now, doing all our pick and pack and then we'd ship. Obviously when we got the phone call and said yes we can do this, uh, we, we didn't have any systems, we didn't have a warehouse, we didn't have anything. I knew Robert Kovas, uh, I'd worked with Robert uh, when we were at, uh, at, at Sheldon's and uh, so I knew he had systems and pretty good systems and so I, uh, I gave Robert a phone call. And well they said uh, would you like to be a partner, they laid out the plan that uh we would provide software to the new company. And we need systems and we don't have any systems and nor do we have any money to, to buy or license systems. So if you, want to, if you can provide us with all the systems we need for free and all the licenses for the systems we need for free, uh, then you can become a director of, uh, and a shareholder of Powerhouse. Uh, and uh, he's, he's oh, Robert, okay, yeah, sure, okay, I'm in, and that was that. We'd go to Robert's every day and I would just plug away on the computer and if Jeff knew I was having a bad day he'd say that's it we'd close the computer and he'd take me for a drive. Knew I loved horses so we'd drive out in the country and um, go look at horses um, and then we'd plug along the next day. The number of moves we've made I think it's close to nine. First Roberts then Kingston Road then the second location on Kingston Road Sunrise and we moved to Sunrise our first actual warehouse with actual doors and receiving doors. I got the call, it was a Sunday night, it was Mother's Day, 2000, I always remember because it was Mother's Day. And it was Jeff just saying, mm, I think you better come down here, our building's on fire. Well, you drive down the whole way, you're terrified. And we did not have, we didn't even really realize what our insurance policy was. We were Obviously, if you're shipping people's product and you haven't got anything to ship anymore, uh, it, customers are not very pleased. What we had was cleanup insurance. So I went out and I bought rubber boots for everyone in our warehouse and we all just chipped in and started the cleanup. So our staff got paid to do the cleanup. You're walking on a Sunday evening and, and the dam, you go, oh my God, you know, what is going on here? And you, what do we have to do? What, what can we do? And uh, let's just get on with it. We didn't lose any custom, uh, customers as a result of that, which was fantastic. Jeff and I, for a lot of years, tried to keep it lean. We didn't have a line of credit. We just funded it by what we made. And it wasn't until, we started this in 1995, it wasn't until 2008 that we started thinking about getting a line of credit. We had all the banking arranged, we had everything approved, and then the recession kicked in. So we decided to shut that down and we just clammed down. The recession was very interesting. We did a, like a job share, which was fun. We were all at, always at work. We knew we could trust them. Uh, they were trying everything possible to accommodate us during job share, but we understood that we had to do it for the company. And uh, you know, we're a big part of that team. 
They took a chance on us when they hired us, so in turn we took a chance on them. We kept all our employees, we didn't lose them through the recession, and we didn't lose them through the fire. We kept everybody. We were very lucky and then it just started to get busy again and we were off work share and we've never had to go back on it again. We're not only employees, but there's an extension. We feel like family. They take an interest in us, we take an interest in them. We've been really close with over the years, not just our employees, but uh, some of our accounts. You really get, you get to know these people. It is that environment here, there's no question about that. You know, I, I think that was stemmed and born from where the company started. Well, I've always said right from the beginning, Jeff is the brains, I'm the glue, and it's never ever changed. Jeff has been a very big influence on what I do. He's a good teacher, he's, he's always come up with something new, always, we're always finding, well it's almost daily too, um, we're always finding um, a quicker and better way to do something. He's an expert in the industry, he is passionate, and just with his, his leadership, um, and everything that he's done to our systems. I mean, he just makes our job a lot easier. easier. I came straight out of high school. He took me under his wings. He taught me everything. I feel really proud to be associated with him, just to absorb that knowledge. Um, but he's, he's just amazing to work for. And what I always did was just took over for him whatever I could. And then he continued thinking further out. I continued on day to day. And really, that has never changed. They're so different and so opinionated, but they bring so, so much, different skills, different experience. Mary's been more in the field. She understands the reps. Jeff's on the other side, more technical. And I think you need that kind of blend. In, in the differences with Mary and I are, um, uh, you know, they, we are quite different. Uh, I think the two things that we have in common uh, absolute trust for each other. I mean, the, the trust is absolute. I would trust Mary Shelton with my life. I think uh, Mary's love of people and her tremendous upbeat happiness all the time, it's non-stop with Mary. Uh, she's got more energy than anybody I know. She's such a heartwarming person. Like, she will never pass by without giving me a hug. I mean, why wouldn't you want to come to work for someone like that? When I think of our motto, make it happen, she's the person I envision saying that phrase. If Powerhouse has a, a, a heart and a culture at all, then it is, uh, it is for Mary. Uh, uh, so, you know, not to say that I, I don't like people, I do. Uh, I'm usually last to leave the parties, uh, we know that, but she just thinks about it from a people perspective all the time. I wouldn't say I'm more of a people person, he is too, but to me, to me, this company has been built on the people we've hired. And we started just hiring family. You know, those friendships have not suffered one bit as a result of, of, uh, of those people working for us, and that speaks for itself. It's people like uh, Maria. I mean, Maria is, is, uh, is, is a great uh, ambassador for this company. She's extremely talented. Um, she's so dedicated, it isn't funny. It's in, ingrained in someone like Chantel. You know, I've known Chantel now for about five years. You can call her all hours of the day, she's there, and you can't make people do that. I think we just get so excited, yeah. we're so challenged, we really want to do a great job, we want to right. convey everything the vendor has for us, and when it's executed and it's perfect, we speak to the vendor and say, oh my God, look what a fabulous job, we feel so good. Yeah, it's, it's a really sense a of sense accomplishment. Of, exactly. You know, look, the people that we employ today, uh, the first warehouse employee that we had, apart from my brother-in-law, was a guy that came in off the street uh, one day and... I just knocked the door and I asked him, are you looking for a job? And Dave Clark, he hired me for the warehouse work about uh, picking order. And there was something about him that was just, who would, who would do that? You know, we said, okay, uh, I'm, like, I'm not counting the neighborhood kids, of course. We happen to need somebody that day and, you know, anybody that's walking the street looking for the job is... Uh, is, uh, is, is going to usually make, a, make a, a good employee. You know, you say, do you pinch yourself? It all has kind of evolved, except that now I look, when I see Battelle's children, I'm thinking, wow, it has been 20 years. When I do think about the labels and, and the companies that we've worked for, they are the leaders in the apparel world. Uh, there's no question about that. We have uh, made it a really, really important thing that we're to employ people who are good people with good hearts and good souls. 
I think that that shines out, out our windows. I think people that come in here see it. It cuts through the corporate stuff. And you've still got to be really good at what you do. You've got to deliver, you've got to make things happen, and we have. Oh, I mean, you look at where power, Powerhouse has gone 20 years ago to, you know, Bobby Burke, you know, needing somebody to distribute, uh, pick pack Tommy Hilfiger shirts in the back of a gas station or something close to it, to where Powerhouse is today versus where it's going. I mean, it's just fantastic. I think the customers, some of our customers, definitely have an attachment to the founders. However, they are aware that the staff we have do in fact execute the, the business. They are aware of how little I do around this place. As long as Powerhouse continues to employ people with good hearts and good souls and who, who do the job, then I think that will take care of itself. You look at how this company was born, it is through friendship. And, and, you know, and, and that management style will rub into and rub off on to the people that work for the company. And, um, I think that's very strong and still a foundation. Hopefully will be the foundation for the future of the company as well. This company is built on people and I think if we can hold on to that and care for our people and um, really hang on with both hands as we grow and try and keep that culture, defend it with everything we've got, then we can probably do anything that we set our minds to.